Hi everybody, I'm Chris and welcome to my sewing channel. This is Sojourns, where we journey into sewing. And today I'm really excited to bring you a brand new pattern release and full pattern review for the Diva Pants, which is a flowy knit pant in many options from the Tie-Dye Diva. I will link the pattern in the description box right underneath here so that when we're done, you can go check it out, look through all the beautiful tester pictures and uh, choose which style you'd like. Before I begin, I wanna thank you for tuning into my channel and I hope that you will like, share and subscribe to the channel so that you'll get an, an email when my next video comes up. I've had a lot of requests for videos and I'm trying to get them all done, so we're always doing something exciting here. So let's get into it. The pattern today is called the Diva Pants and they're from the Tie-Dye Diva Pattern Company. This may be a new pattern company for you and I really encourage you to check her out. She began as a children's pattern designer and is very, very well known for that and gorgeous patterns. So if you sew for children's wear, you should definitely check it out. I think you'll really love them. Really professional, really beautiful. And a few years ago, she ventured into ladies patterns and I've been testing for her since the beginning of her ladies patterns and I have them all. The Diva Pants are a palazzo style or a straight leg style pant for knit fabrics with about 50% stretch, which really gives you a wide variety of fabrics you can use. I made four pair and I used rayon spandex, ITY, two pair I think were in ITY, and I did a heavyweight four-way stretch knit ponte for the straight leg version. And they're beautiful, especially if you're coming into fall and winter weather like I will be. You can also use double brush poly. That was a really popular knit to use with the testers. So you have a large variety to choose from. The Diva pants come in sizes zero, so that's extra small, through 3X or size 26. And that gives you a hip up to 55. These pants are very forgiving. There's a lot of ease in them. I even decided to go down one size, so you can expand that size, I think, you know, into maybe a 56, 57 inch hip with no problem. Because if you're on the lower side of the range, you can go down to the next size. It has a, an elastic, wide elastic waistband for comfort. And you can choose to use wide elastic like I did or narrow elastic and then you just create a casing. They're really comfortable. There are three rise options, low rise, mid rise, and high rise. So they really adapt to your body. I'm about five, four and a half, five, five. And I'm a little bit short-waisted, just a little. So the mid-rise is really perfect for me. And I'll be showing you pictures as I go through here so you can see where they hit me, how they look. The mid-rise is perfect for me. Always, of course, do a muslin. And to save yourself some fabric, I did a muslin in a knee-length short to make sure that I didn't need any alterations, which is often the case with pants. So feel free to do those. Check your crotch curve, your rise, choose the rise that's right for you. They also have different length versions. There's the full length, which of course goes to the top of the foot. Those look super nice in the flared or palazzo style pants. And there's also an ankle version, which is two inches shorter to come to the ankle bone. I did those in this beautiful ITY brown fan fabric, patterned fabric, and they look so good with booties or boots for the upcoming fall because you just see a little bit more of the boot or booty and it looks adorable with a crop jacket or a long cardigan. Probably my favorite pair. Well, maybe. I don't know. I like them all. So we have the ankle length, we have the full length, and then there's also a cropped version, kind of like a longer capri length, if you will, maybe seven eighths length, you might call it. And those are really more for the straight style of pants. So there's lots of options. There's also optional hip pockets, and there are two options of belts. The belts get sewn into the side seam of the wide elastic waistband, so you don't have any bulk in the back, which is really nice, and it comes across the waist. There's a wide belt, and that's about the same width 
as the waistband. And then there's a narrow belt, which is about half the width of the waistband. I did put the narrow belt onto my Ponte pair. I made an eggplant purple Ponte pair and I used the narrow belt. I didn't want all the bulk of the wide belt because the Ponte is a double knit. So it's thicker and heavier with a little bit less drape, although this Ponte is very lovely. And the narrow belt was a great choice. I also did put the pockets on that one because the Ponte weight can hold the pockets. They were easy to sew, they looked beautiful. I even top stitched those pockets with a triple cover stitch and they look fantastic. I did not choose the pockets on the pairs that I made out of ITY or rayon spandex because those fabrics are very slippery, they're very slinky. Pockets would be a bear to sew and really not hold anything in the pockets very well without sagging. I do encourage you to check out this pattern. It's, it's really lovely. I like the way they fit. I didn't really have to make any alterations other than took off a little bit for length. There is a length and a shortened line. And the inseams are marked on the pattern. The full length is 29 inch inseam. The cropped, I'm sorry, I don't remember the cropped, the ankle, because I didn't make the cropped version, but the ankle is 27. So if, if coming to your ankle, you need to take off a little bit. You would take it off at that shortened length of mine and then turn up your hem and you're all set to go. I did shorten mine about a half inch and it worked out perfectly. I'm gonna show you some of my diva pants. And I also have a so you can tip today. Let me grab this pair of diva pants here. I had a vision in my head that I wanted to use a border print for these pants. So stand up here and see. So I've used a border print on the bottom of the pants and on the waistband. And using a border print can be a little bit tricky. It's also a rayon spandex, so it's a little bit tricky there with sliding around. Let me grab this border print here for you. This is a beautiful border print. And hopefully you can see that this is the selvage here. And the border runs at the top and the bottom of the selvage. So I needed to turn it this way, or excuse me, I needed to cut my pants this way in order to have my vision come through. So I have a lot of tips on how you can get the border to match exactly at the bottom where you want it on the front and the back and how to get that waistband to have the border right in the center. So let's get right into our So You Can tip working with border prints. I'm getting ready now to do another pair of the Diva pants and I'm going to be doing the flared version with the rayon spandex border print. And I wanted to show you how I'm laying out the border print. This is the selvage here. And normally you would fold selvage to selvage to cut out your patterns. But this border print is a four way stretch. So I can actually turn it to accommodate what I want. And this is a really fun creative part about sewing. So I'm going to grab my pattern and I'm going to show you how I'm laying this out. And I'm just, for instance, going to grab the front piece. And I'm going to come down here. I want the border to be at the bottom of the flared pants. That's going to look so pretty. So from the top of the pants down to about here is going to be this beautiful print. Then the border is going to have this swishy, flare, gorgeous border at the bottom. I did make a half inch height adjustment here at the length and shortened line. I just folded it up and taped it. So later, if I want to do longer, I can. I'm doing the full length on this. So I'll get this on green and have it right about there, and I'm going to cut it this way. That also allows me to use the top of the border print as my waistband. So I'm going to cut the waistband from the border, which will then match the bottom of the pants. And this is gonna look adorable because this is gonna be the waistband attached to the top of the pants, which will then match the border at the bottom. So I'm really excited about how this is gonna come out, but I just wanted to show you this is how I'm laying out my pattern 
on the fabric. One other thing I wanted to mention is that normally I will cut with the fabric folded and I'd be cutting both pieces, mirror image, two front legs, mirror image with one cut. But because of the really slipperiness of this rayon spandex, it's always better to just cut separate pieces. So I'll cut the first front piece like this and then I'll turn my, fat, my pattern over so that it's upside down to cut the second front leg so I'll have mirror images. If you try to cut this folded, it's very slippery and nine times out of 10, it will slip off grain, the sides won't match up, but that's what I'm going to do. So I'll start with this one, turn the pattern over so that it's upside down, cut the second one and I'll do the same for the back pieces. Here I have my front and my back pattern pieces and I just want to show you how I mark marked them so that I can get the border print even. So I measured up from the bottom of my pattern on the front and back where I wanted that border print to begin so that it was the same on the pants when you look at the side seam from front to back. I'm going to bring over my pattern now and you measure up as much as you want. I think I used 10 inches. And now I have my front and back pants pinned together, as the tutorial will tell you, inseams and outseams. I'm going to sew those together. But before I do, before I do, I just wanted to show you something, how I made sure that my border print will be even. On my pattern, I cut a little slit where on the front pants, I started that border print. I did the same on the back so that I'll know that they'll line up. So here I have my front and my back lined up and all I have to do, you can see that's exactly the same. The back of the pants, the front of the pants, start the border at the same place. Just line up that little slit and they'll match. Now I'm going to be serging these pants and I'm going to add a little differential feed to my serger to keep it even and to keep them from stretching out. But because this rayon spandex is very slippery and I want that border to be even, that's gonna be really important for the look of the pants so that it's symmetrical. I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine and I'm gonna run a basting stitch about an inch before this notch and an inch after just to keep that border print from slipping and pulling under my serger so that it doesn't shift and I have even matching border from front to back leg. So I'm going to baste that first, about two inches or so, right over that, and then do everything else on the serger. Next I'll be working on the waistband. I have the pants sewn together, but I want to show you the little change that I made to the waistband. This is a very wide waistband. It's about seven inches in width and you fold the waistband in half. This is the back waistband, this is the front waistband. But when you go to construct this, you'll fold the waistband in half and you'll be sewing it to the pants along this raw edge. This waistband is wide because in the pattern, there's an opportunity to add a wide belt. I'm not adding the wide belt to these pants because I don't wanna disturb this pretty border that we're gonna make on the waistband. So the wide belt needs to accommodate this, but since I'm not doing that, and I would like a little bit thinner, less tall of a waistband, I'm going to be using two inch elastic. I like a very flat waistband, so I like to use the wider elastic and not have a casing run through my waistband. I don't wanna disturb the look of this border. So I'm going to show you that I'm going to take some width off of this waistband two inch waistband, folded in half, this is three and a half inches. That's still an inch and a half of wiggle room where this elastic will wiggle around. So I'm going to make that shorter. I'm going to take off one inch from the folded waistband, which in actuality is going to be two inches off of this because I have this folded in half. So when I fold it back in half and use my quilting ruler, to remove an inch, 
It's hard to see this one. I'm trying to stay out of the camera. Here we go. When I remove an inch, I'm actually removing two inches. So instead of having a three and a half inch waistband, I'm going to have about a two and a half inch waistband. And that way I have enough room for a three eighths of an inch seam allowance and an extra eighth of an inch to insert the elastic and have it lay nice and flat. All right, I'm ready to sew on my waistband. So I cut my waistband like I showed you by shortening each of the back and the front waistband. There is a back and a front waistband, so make sure you mark that either by taking the two little notches or using a tailor's chalk or whatever your method is. Then that waistband gets put on, of course, sewn together at the side seams, folded over, just like in the tutorial. And then these side seams of the waistband will line up with the side seams of your pants. And I just wanna show you that I'm going to go over and base this together before I take it to my serger just like I did when we were lining up the border print. Because it's a very slippery fabric, I really want that to look nice and neat when it's on, where the side seam of the pants will just flow into the side seam of the waistband, so you'll have a really nice look. So I have it pinned all the way around, and you'll see that you're gonna be stretching your waistband to fit your pants, as we always do with this type of waistband. And I have the side seam pinned at the side seam, so when I flip it up, you'll see that they match perfectly. And I need to just baste that on before I take it to the serger to serge on this waistband. So I'm going to do that here. And I'm just gonna, I'm just going to baste that. I'm starting about two inches before and about two inches after. Maybe I'm gonna start actually a little closer since this does get stretched to fit. An inch will be adequate on either side. And we can stretch at different points. So I'm going to go slow. This is just a basting stitch. It's going to come out later. When I get here, I'm going to remove my pin, line this up, and take a few more stitches past that seam. There we go. I'm going to raise the needle. I just want to do that on both side seams so that you have a nice, even, beautiful waistband, and we can double check it. And if it slipped, we can do it again. See, it did slip a little. There's a tiny bit of difference here. I'm just going to take out a few stitches, run that back until I get it where I like it. And then I'll take it to the serger. I'm going to start serging at the back. Serge all the way around, leaving about a two inch opening so I can insert my elastic. I'm going to measure my elastic to make sure it sits exactly the length that I need. You custom fit your elastic and then I'll just serge that opening closed. I just want to show you that when you take the time to baste those seams together, and I just took out those basting stitches and redid it another five seconds. It really pays off. That lines up beautifully. And then later, after I get my elastic in, I will stitch in the ditch. I'll come back and show you so that elastic doesn't move. Now I'm gonna serge on my waistband. Now I have my whole waistband constructed. With the elastic in, you can see the wide elastic is in here. It's surged on completely. Now it's nice and flat and looks wonderful. There is a little bit of space here, of course, so you can get your waistband in. So I'm going to come over here to the side seam and I'm going to stitch in the ditch from the top of the waistband to the seam where the waistband joins the pants, right through the elastic so that it doesn't twist when I'm wearing it or twist in the laundry. So the first thing I'm going to do is just make sure that my elastic is even, the gathers are even. Of course, there's going to be some gathers because your waistband is smaller than your pants, so it hugs your body. And over here, I'm going to switch my presser foot to this stitch guide foot. The stitch guide foot has this, gu has this guide here, and that will help me to line directly up into the seam so that those stitches I'm going to make are gonna be invisible. So I'm just gonna add this to my machine the way you normally do. Okay, let's pull back here and get this all set up. I'm going to take my pants, my elastic is nice and even, and I'm going to pull it taut. And just using a regular straight stitch, I'm going to bring this under the needle and 
I'm going to line up this guide right into the seam. It's going to just glide right in that seam. And to bring this back a tiny bit so the first stitch catches. There we go, right under the needle. And I'm just going to stitch in the ditch right into that seam and then I'll back stitch and lock it in. So I'm going to pull this nice and flat. And here we go. And it's going to glide right in that seam until I get right there. We're going to back stitch and lock it in. We'll do the same thing to both side seams. And I'll cut those away, but here you can't even see it. It's right in the seam. My elastic now will stay put and not twist when I'm wearing it or laundering it. Well, there you go. I hope you'll give border prints a try. It's a really fun way to personalize your diva pants. And I'm excited for you to try this pattern. As always, I'd love to see your creations for the patterns that we review. So please feel free to tag me at Sojourns on social media, Instagram, Facebook, of course, here on YouTube. I also want to send a big shout out to any of my Sojourns.com blog users that have come over with me here to YouTube. I started out with my blog at Sojourns.com and I'll be closing that blog in a few days as I bring everything over here to YouTube because I can connect with you. I can talk with you, we can connect more and I really like that. Also, I'll be able to visually bring you these things and I just think that has been really wonderful. So thank you all, I appreciate each one of you. Please in the comments below, I'd love to hear your thoughtful comments, answer your questions if I can and be sure to share your makes with me. I hope you check out the Diva Pants and all the patterns from Tie-Dye Diva. The New York Minute, the Mermaid Skirt, which was her first pattern that I tested and it's gorgeous. There are a couple of versions of that. As always, thank you for joining me here at Sojourns. Thank you for liking and subscribing to my channel. I'll see you soon with another So You Can Tip, pattern review, or technique.